100% save percentage. He leads the t entire defense, and he, we'll see where he co comes in, but he's in tremendous do it. And at that point, you know, I think that just Duke came a few goals short of a, of a really good comeback, but um, we'll see if they reset today. Palumbo drives in, looking and already on the board, the Tigers. On their first possession, they're able to put one in the back of the net. Yeah, it was, it was a great, in, great inside move here. He just came in, short stick on short stick, brought him in, and there really wasn't a slide that was timely in the sense that he was going to ha have any physical harm, um, you know, or even any any impediments. So, you know, I think the bullies also will have, um, you know, sometimes a dead ball in front of the, the um, in front of the crease, meaning the the ball slows down in the mud. And that can be that can be a real uh, a real issue for goalies being able to read where the where it's going. Right there, you see Gio Fricano making a great save, but was un unable to get that clear going. Duke looking to equalize. That one a great save again, and Princeton moves it the other way. Past the midline. Coming in, averaging about 13 goals per game, and again coming off a 15-9 impressive win in Chapel Hill over the Tar Heels. Yeah. So it's a great second chance ground ball right there for Princeton. Uh, resets and you know th those are the kinds of things you want to win if you do right now to get on all, all over that Another goal for Princeton they score once more and the Tigers are off to a scalding start Sean Cameron gets the goal Great ball. Yeah, they're th right here. You've got Brennan O'Neill trying to get it up Dyson Williams taking a nice shot um, on Giafricano great save and then a second chance ground ball that leads to an opportunistic goal. Um, Jameson looking to try to get some body position on that. It just missed it. 17 goals a game going in. Um, but they were, it, was, uh, it was seven. And it's flicked in by the Blue Devils as Johnston gets the Blue Devils on the board. And he's a little slow to get up after the goal. We'll take another look. Yeah, great individual effort. He pulls in a little bit of an inside, inside face dodge, comes in. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Lost it in a created turnover. Princeton moves looking for goal number three. Yeah, so we are seeing it is a little, still a little slippery. We had an epic amount of rain the other night that um, carried well after both games concluded. Um, yesterday was a dry out day for this field, but it can only absorb so much. So you're, um, you know, you're really going to probably see a few guys slipping and sliding around as they initiate their dodges. And you caught the field conditions. You were down there seeing exactly just how it was. I mean, it's not exactly ideal after you have that type of torrential downpour. Yeah, these, these fields need a good 72 hours to usually to soak it up. Beautiful save. That's a great save from Jamison as he's able to net it. And the counterattack begins for the Blue Devils. Yeah, I think that's, you know, a lot of times uh, great saves lead to good offense, so let's see what happens. And taken down, looks like that's going to be a penalty. As he's chopped down already, was there some laundry right around the mid stripe? And we'll take another replay. Look first, looking at that save from Jameson. Yeah, beautiful. He had eyes on that. He, under, he saw the, his point of release, and then you've got the gargantuan shot by O'Neal. Big celebration. Giovancaro looking for where the ball went. Can't find it. Duke will have the man up advantage now. And we'll call that on Kistler. He started every game. Four Good. ground balls and two straight. I watched Balsamo, number one. He's going to probably roll to the crease eventually, and he's a really good, uh, you know, positioning shooter from the crease on man up. He'll get open uh, whether he's facing the goalie or whether he's facing up top and get that quick shot off. Um, that one off the ground and in the net. It's the spirit, the heart of this Duke team coming through with a third goal for the Blue Devils. Yeah, he's the Energizer, Energizer Bunny. Mac and Andrew McIntory, beautiful ball movement, found the open player. He takes a really good shot. Again, he almost always shoots off of his hip, so it hides the ball from a point of release, and it goes right in offside against one of the best goalies in the country, who's 
you know, can drive the ball, you know, 350 yards in golf. It's their, it's how they tort, uh, torque and, and, and spin off. So that's it. Back to back goals for Duke. The offense is flowing. Williams gets one and it's four to two Blue Devils. Heads up play by Balsamo. He sees it, he's got the opportunity right there with a the slip, he comes in, instead taking the shot, passes off to Dyson Williams who is the NCAA sharpshooter in the league. He's the number one draft pick for the Canadian Indoor League. And going from game A to game B, you know, Carolina for example to, to Duke, you're gonna have different matchups. Um, and that's why I love this game. There are no two games that are the same. That one's in the back of the net as well. Duke gets another. So someone about three minutes ago just said that Ben Johnson should shoot on the ground to take advantage of the wet crease. I don't know. I know. I have to say. Someone who knows what they're talking about. I, you know, I'm just saying, you know, shoot on the ground and you don't know exactly what kind of bounce you're going to get. And um, I, I think that this is a very class, classic textbook case of that. That one did take a weird... What Princeton did to Carolina the other night. Williams almost got another opportunity right near the crease. Unable to finish as Duke with 12 seconds left. All right, taking care of the ball. Under 10 seconds to play. Blue Devils looking for another and got it. Zawada gets his second. And with four seconds before the first quarter ends, Duke is in control. Yeah. Sometimes a player will will sometimes a player will will themselves to do great things. This is Zawada, knowing how much time is on the clock, willing himself, putting his body on the line, coming around the goal with a, with reckless almost abandon and saying, "I will decide." And he decided right there. Amazing goal by four six Princeton saves as they have a six to two lead and they'll take the opening face off of quarter number two. And direct an immediate attack. Going straight for the jugular. Yeah, uh, they're going to get their subs on right now. 30. Sl Slusher, right there. Slusher looking for something. Pr Princeton transfer, I believe, yeah. And what's interesting is Princeton is not a program, really a school that has many transfers, period, but you have a couple on the Blue Devil side instead. Yeah, I mean, because of the Ivy League rules, guys, you know, are, are in... And a spin around and a shot, Zawada again. He cashes in already three goals, and it's a 7-2 Duke lead. Classic dodge, question mark. He comes around, switches hands, question mark, puts it five hole. Um, you know, one of those things where when you do a question mark dodge, the goalie really is not going to be able to see the release point until the very last second, and usually it's kind of understands, again, the matchups, you know, because every game's different. You, you might... One game, feel like you have an advantage over a defender. The next game, you're really having a tough time. So probing in the first quarter, feeling out those matchups, beautiful check right there. Um, that was uh, Balsamo trying to do a little bit of an inside move and, uh, and just got it, left the stick hanging a little bit. Um, Into the attacking third go, the Blue Devils. Yes, yeah, so that was a great play, but then you got to sort of get your emotions in check, which is very hard when you're running at about, you know, 16, 17 miles an hour down the field. Um, and okay, so we're seeing a red hot performance by James. Spin from Burns. And another opportunity goes by the wayside for Princeton. How about Jameson? Yeah, I mean, you're looking, you're looking at, you know, for a couple in the first few minutes, but Jamison has been electric in the cage so far. And with five minutes to play, Duke again on the offensive side. Yeah, I, I just think I, I see it just in a, a, a much different team. Duke is playing with purpose. You know, they're they're really mapping out. They're looking at the matchups. That was a perfect example. You know, when you really look at it, Johnson was coming coming out. He saw that he had a step, and then he pivots back, takes a step. Boom, puts it past, great goalie, upper corner. Gia Vincaro didn't even see it. So the Devils are dictating the pace and everything. Like no one knows how high the ceiling is for a certain type of player. You're going out there, yeah. you have nervous infectious energy, but it's a good energy. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 just one of those things where it's it's a pleasure to watch. 
Quick pass and a rip. Duke continues to pour it on. This one, Williams. Blue Devils with a 9-2 lead. Yeah, it's just a, a smart play, and I think we just he saw some blown coverage right there on the left side, and then right afterwards you see the the, the Princeton defenders, you know, sort of getting on each other and uh, talking to each other. So there was definitely some miscommunication. Wide open, wide open player. Princeton will look for an answer. It's been over 22 minutes since they've scored. Here's a prime opportunity, and they do just that. Colin Burns making his mark on this contest with his first goal of the game. Yeah, it was a very nice, very nice face-off, leading to quick offense. Uh, really pressured and uh, made the right pass. Got it off, tic-tac-toe, a beautiful finish right there over the head of Jameson, and uh, that's the way it's supposed to look. That's a textbook fast break off the, off the face-off. He's got to bring that stick in a little bit and to avoid that trail check. A few too many passes right near the cage as Duke had an opportunity and they can't convert. Mackesy. He'll take his time, still plenty of time on the shot clock. Kicks it out for Wade. They go behind the goal, working all angles. Kicked right in, Jamison again. He's a brick wall today, and he makes another one. Forty seconds to play in quarter number two. Blue Devils on the counter, and that one's in again. Duke able to convert in transition from the save to the goal. Duke firing on all cylinders. Yeah, great save here. Off, great defense leads to great offense. You know, they got it down. He made a terrific outlet pass. And then Caputo comes in and, you know, he beat his man and had an extra step. And then all of a sudden he realized, you know, I can keep going. Went in, sacrificed his body and put it in the future there. And he's, you know, his roots are there. His dad was an amazing box player as well, indoor player. So um, it's exciting, you know, to have all this great, that, that much great talent. Duke picks it up. It was loose for a moment. Princeton had it for a second. 9.9 .9 seconds. This is going to be interesting. Can Duke strike quickly? O'Neal gives it up, and they do. What a beautiful play. Williams converts again, and the Blue Devils, with under 10 seconds before the second frame sounds, are able to convert. Yeah, beautiful play. A lot of the attention started going over to Brendan O'Neill, and he knew that. And he knew his, 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 his. By eight, perhaps, at the break. But at the same time, you know this is a capable team, to your point, that can put goals together if they have to. Right. And what you just saw right there at the X is a big reason why we're having a different, the, the Devils are having a different experience uh, today is because they are winning the faceoffs. They so doing a great job on faceoffs today. As Duke will look to add on to the eight-goal advantage. Johnston will patrol for just a moment, and Duke will give it over to McAdory. Slings it in and bounces one more. Picking up where they left off in half number one. The Blue Devils pouring it on the Tigers. Andrew McAdory gets a step and, you know, really has a lot of time and space to shoot. Um, there wasn't a slide in this middle alley, so he just kept down. Used that high torsion, bounce shot, offside hip, and uh, quick discard for Denenza. He had multiple steps in that opportunity. Gives it off, Denenza gets it back. Denenza shoots and a good save. Gian Ficaro has been busy today, and he's able to come through with a pivotal stop. For um, Via Zancara to get the uh, get his, uh, his eyes on it. Another save from Jamison. Is that going up? He had an opportunity. Yeah, it was, it was a tough, sh tough angle on that one. I mean, even with the power that he brings to his shots, having, a, having almost no angle on a, on a goalie like Gia Ficaro is, uh, is, is going gonna, is gonna to be a tough proposition. That one's loose, and the Blue Devils come up with it. O'Neal in transition, open opportunity, and they make him pay. Zawada having a day.
Gritty play in the middle of the field. Tyler Carpenter, All-American, picks that ball up, makes quick business of it, down to Brennan O'Neill, who sees Josh Shawada, and that's an automatic goal at that point. Beautiful, beautiful play. Bing, bang, boom, and there's nothing really that the Tigers can do. Burns tried to wrap around, couldn't do it. Mackesy sees a second body and instead will try and pass it off to a teammate. He gives it off, up in the air, and Jamison got it. Now let's see what the freshman does. Leading the counter is Jamison. Smart. And he'll give that off. Yep, smart. That's a wise opportunity. You know, how do you, how do you sort of separate the two when you're out there and you know I love these guys I played with them for years but now they're they're my arch enemies on the field tough to try and flip that switch so to speak but slusher from Portland Oregon 5'9 185 had 46 goals with the Princeton Tigers in 2022 and his Blue Devils now with a 10-goal lead and make it nine. That one sneaks past Jamison. A good flick from McAsey. McAsey able to get this goal right past the Duke defense, and he cashes in, narrows the deficit. It's still 13-4 with the Blue Devils in front. Things working in your way into the fourth quarter. So slowing this down, taking the full, they have 48 seconds left, um, working it for, for a nice goal to counter that one that, they, that, they just, that Princeton just scored. Just a couple of opportunities remaining for both sides in quarter number three. Offense has been at a premium in the third frame. Three combined goals, two coming from Duke, one of which came in the first minute of the third quarter. But Duke has kept their foot on the gas. See, they're going, they're going over Balsamo's head. They're trying to get that trail check. Uh, he, he tucked it in that time, which was very nice. But that was something that they're trying to, that they're trying to work. Fit it into a tight window, and somehow they score. Williams finds a non-existent crease and puts it in. Yeah, that was a. One of the nicest box lacrosse moves I've seen. You know, you could you could throw it into any tight place, and Dyson Williams can catch it, and then with three guys on him, work that magic. I mean, how does this work? I. This is one of the nicest shots I've seen all all year, and he was raised doing this. In net, he has been Sterling with 13 saves. And Duke in prime position to come away with this one, but they still have 15 minutes. They need the full, complete game effort if you're the Blue Devils, and if you're Princeton, have to try and take advantage. Yeah, it was a heady play right there by Tyler Carpenter. Wiry and can get right where he needs to be in order to dislodge the ball or pick the ball up and then start quick offense, get down that field. Um, love watching him play. He's just such a really amazing facet of this team. Johnston will kick it off and a good save, Gian Ficaro. That was a bouncer coming from Sloat and an opportunity, but Princeton keeps it at 10 goals. Billings will bring it across the midline. Princeton moves quickly. Time at a premium, under 60 seconds. Quick shot and a good save. Jamison. So, um, that one lips off the stick. See, in those situations right there, that defender needs to be given the ability to fight for the ball. And they didn't call a push on that, but they were call they've been calling that. You know, like for example, Boyer coming up and trying to fight for that ball. Um, yeah. Princeton will sneak one by. They continue. Their assault on the offensive side under siege was Jamison. And a fifth goal on the board for Princeton. Yeah, he, got the, he got the step on Gray and then he came around. I, I actually don't think that Jamison had, was dialed into the fact that he was possibly going to have such a quick release and let that go. He wasn't really set. That's the first time today. Uh, but and it's not about, he's a captain. It's not about, you know, 
whether he scores or not, but he is a force to be reckoned with. Does have six shots today. A couple of ground balls picked up as well. Princeton continuing to go around. Wind up in a flick. A good looking save from Rackauer. Yeah, and, and I think every all, all of these clears right now, they obviously they want to they want to execute them and get them over as quick as possible. When the world world team coach, an all time leading you know win, win, winning coach in, in college lacrosse, likes the way you are positioning yourself in the goal, likes how you set up. Um, that's a good thing. That seems like a positive. Yeah, that's a really good thing. <laughs> that's a big plus for sure. Under seven minutes to play. Ten seconds for the Blue Devils. They're doing exactly what you talked about, David. It's clock management at this point. Yeah, I think I think they like even e even if they don't score, look what happens. And they score anyway. At the expiration of the shot clock, it'll count, and Duke is back up ten. Dyson Williams Pick up the good judgment of the refs who see uh, I think almost all the game but sometimes they can't see every angle that one was off the cage to so a reset of the shot clock Duke looking to strike again and it's too easy for the Blue Devils O'Neal had an open opportunity makes them pay high and Duke running away with this one with 513 left So I don't, I don't ex exactly know why they were sloughed so far out, but when you look at it, O'Neal was wide open, and they were man down, yet they were chasing. Now, 25 Pap seconds to shoot. Papendick with the ball. Slusher's got it now. And they're doing exactly what you talked about. They're content to just take it down 15, 10 seconds before they do on an offensive assault. assault. <laughs> they do just that anyway. Slusher comes through the Princeton transfer. That's an emotional goal right there. And the one thing the Devils have been doing is getting the one step advantage from behind the goal. There's another classic example. He got the step, but way before he got to goal line extended, he's already beat this man right here. He's coming around and it's all him, the goalie, and he's gonna put it offside, which is a classic move on the- 34 to 21 on goal advantage. They've done a great job having quality opportunities today. A little bit of a scrum in front here. The Devils trying to break it out. Scooped and up off the ground by Princeton. Yeah, we got a break here. A slow developing break, but I think, I think at this point the Tigers are going to push it. Princeton looking for something just to try and cushion the blow from this game against Duke, and they'll find it. That was Burns who rips a goal right past Rackauer. Princeton still trailing 17 to 6, but something good, and some momentum moving forward for Burns. To life, you know. And it's very cool to see it, watch it all unfold. And witnessing it firsthand today at Koskinen Stadium, where Duke is going to walk out of here a winner. The question is just by how much, as Princeton will play with a man up for the next 15 seconds. And they'll cash one more in. Cosmetic at this point, but Princeton makes it 17 to seven. Yeah, I, I think for me, one of the best things that I'm gonna be watching for, well, this was a great textbook goal and you know, you look, you can look at Mackesy just doing what he's done all season long. Huge wind up on that for the rest of the season because now he knows he can do it in a big game and do it in a huge way. Impressive stuff today from Jameson. I borrowed Fleck, uh, Flummox and Vex from you, Stratospheric. You know, the give and take. That's what no, makes I, it I work. Like, I like you know, Stratospheric. <laughs> Princeton will score once more with 22.3 remaining. Another one that's cosmetic. Perhaps Duke not too excited about that. It's down to nine. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think that this, that was just a nice little give and go. Uh, rack and the clock will expire. Duke a winner today. They bounce back in spectacular fashion against the Princeton Tigers, and they're back on the winning track.
yeah, this was the ultimate redemption game. I think Duke showed that it is, you know, in the top echelon of lacrosse in the hunt, um, and it chooses to play a difficult schedule. A disappointing loss to UPenn, countered by an amazing win against Princeton.